Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4. This will be the hidden hero of Hazor. The hidden hero of Hazor. Or maybe I should say Hiroshima. But we'll see. Uh, well, it should sound familiar. All the it's in the Bible. I'm sure you got that memorized. <laughs> Hazor, H A Z O R. Judges chapter four. Hero. This is the story of um, Deborah and Barak and Sisera and Jael, and you know the story. We'll we'll review it. Okay, verse 1. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. Okay, so we've got in Judges, you go through, and the first thing you find is that after Joshua dies, everything goes to pot. <laughs> they don't have a police officer there to crack the whip on them and tell them, hey, you got to obey the law. So when it's their choice to obey the law on their own, they fall apart, as do most people. That's why it's very important to belong to a group, a church or a group or something that's going to encourage you, hey, clean it up. Hey, look at what I found. Because if you're out there on your own, the tendency is to do just what the book of Judges proves. We fall apart. Uh, so then the first thing that happens is the first judge that we find in Judges is, anybody know? No. 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 Othniel. Oh, I would never have that. It's the brother of Caleb. Yes. That's the first judge. He judges, and um, after him is Ehud. You'll remember Ehud is the one who was the left handed. He had made the dagger and st stabbed. Um, yeah, the fat man. What's his Ehud name? Eglon. Uh, Eglon. Yeah. The one that's in Judges 4. Yes, that's number two. So now we're on judge number three. So verse number two. And the Lord sold them in the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, <clears throat> that reigned in Hazor. That's our city. The captain who was uh, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Herosheth of the Gentiles. <clears throat> so you can call this either city you want to. The king is from Hazor. The captain of his army is from Herosheth. Herosheth. How do you say that word? That's where he's from. Verse 3. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron. And 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. So the king has instituted a terrorist to keep Israel in order. They're just going to put them in terror. And by that, they get to rule them. Kind of like we see starting to develop in America. Verse 4. And Deborah, the prophetess, the wife of Lapideth, she judged Israel at that time. She's the third judge? She is. Now you'll find people who will tell you that she is not a judge, she's a prophetess. But according to the Bible, She's a judge. She's not only a judge, but she judged. <laughs> it's pretty clear. Uh, verse 5. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah. Now that is not named after her. That is, um, you'll find a cross reference there. That's uh, Rebecca's nurse died there. And they named it after that Deborah, not this Deborah. Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded thee, saying, Go, draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, of the children of Zebulun? And I will draw unto thee, unto the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. 
And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. <laughs> and Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh. And he went up to he went up with ten thousand men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. And Barak pursued after the chariots and after the uh, verse sixteen, sorry I didn't tell you. Drop down to verse sixteen, we'll get the end of the story. This way I don't have to read you a whole chapter. Mm -hmm. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the hosts unto Herosheth of the Gentiles, and all the host of Syria fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. Drop down to verse twenty four. And the hand of uh, the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, the king of Canaan. So we have a victory here. Israel is done their up and down and up and down and up and down, just like all Christians do, the up and down, up and down. Um, and this is how we're going to find them on the up. They've conquered the foe. And that was the story of how it happened. Let's investigate and see if we can identify the hero of this story. There's a hidden hero in this story. So we're going to look at the characters. I don't have time to look at all of them. I'm going to skip one of them, but I'll mention it as we get there. The first character we want to look at is Barak. Barak the baby. Barak the, the baby. baby. Yeah. Yes. Chapter 4, verse 6. Chapter 4, 6. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go, and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, of the children of Zebulun? Look back up at verse 2. I'm sorry, chap, go backward, chapter 3, verse 2. Chapter 3, verse 2. This is a typical thing that happens in the book of Judges. Somebody has to come out as the leader of an army. Notice, there's no, like with the story of Samson, we find the process of gathering an army. We don't find that here. They just needed a leader to take them to battle. They were ready to fight. And if you've been put through enough of life's trouble and struggle, you're ready to fight, or you should be. You just need a leader. You need somebody to tell you how to fight. He said in Judges 3, 2, this is why he left these heathen nations there, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at least such as before knew nothing thereof. So war was the reason that the tribulation and trouble and all the heathen nations there existed. So we're going to watch them go to war. Well, let's take a look at the captain of their, their host here, the big baby. <laughs> How would you like him to be your head general? <laughs> no. uh, he has a, um, a main problem, and that's apathy. He really didn't care. Now, most of our problems... Uh, are not for a lack of knowledge. It's for a lack of will. You you really don't need me to stand up here and tell you what you're doing right or wrong. You already know that. You know that. God reveals to every individual, his child, if you're his child, you better believe he's going to tell you what he wants you to do or not do. So I don't need to tell you that. And a lot of times people will come to you asking advice, and they're not asking advice. They're asking you, have I hidden my problem well enough that we can find some other way around it? <laughs> That's what they're asking. They really know the answer. So sometimes the best advice is to say, I don't know the answer, you will. Here, he knew the answer. Look at chapter 4, verse 6. Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded? He already knew God had impressed on his heart. Go get some guys together and beat these people off. Get you an army and go out there and fight them. God had already talked to him about this. The woman is scolding him. <laughs> he says, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded? He doesn't answer that. 
Because he knows the answer. Yeah, I've been commanded to do that already. Um, so apathy is his, his issue. Look at Genesis 27 and let's find it in another story. I'm not going to give you a lot of illustrations because this is just one big illustration. But here we'll give you one other illustration and that will probably do it up for the sermon. Genesis 27:18. Genesis 27, 18. Everybody know where we are, story-wise? Mm -hmm. Where is this? Esau and Jacob. Correct. This is the birthright. Mm -hmm. They're going into... There's a little trickery going on here. Yes. Verse 18. And he came to his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? <laughs> okay. Right off the bat, he knew something here is not right. That ain't the voice I'm supposed to be hearing. He knew it. Let's watch him find a way around what he already knew. Verse 19. And Jacob said unto the father, to his father, I am Esau thy firstborn. I have done according to the, that, according as thou biddest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit, and eat my venison, that thy soul might bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? Question number two. Are you really who you say you are? This isn't adding up. Okay, he's already done the math. He knows what the facts are. He's trying to ignore them. He figures if I ask enough questions and I let him um, excuse himself enough times, we'll both feel good about this. And he said, because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Doesn't that sound pious? <laughs> Verse 21. Yep. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son, Esau, or not. Okay, now he's questioned again. Wait a minute. I just don't have peace about this. Come over here and let me feel you. I want to get a feeling of what's going on. You start depending on feelings, you get in trouble. Verse 22, And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. Verse 24, And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he came near and kissed, oh, drop down to verse 27. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. He's convinced himself that what he knows is wrong is okay. He already knew there's a lot of things here that ain't adding up. This ain't working out right. But I really want it to. He's, apathy, he's got an apathy problem, just like the others did. If he didn't have apathy, apathy means I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, you, you could care less, uh, just let it happen. If he didn't have apathy, he would have to investigate. He, had to go get both he would have to do something. Get both he would have to say, um, yeah, bring them both in here. Mm -hmm. Sit down and wait until we can have everybody at the whole family meeting here. And then we'll find out. But that would require too much work. He says he's on his deathbed, but he lives another 30 years. You know. <laughs> it's uh, the, the wife, The wife, who thought she was going to be around for a long time, ends up dying before him. Mm -hmm. um, so he's doing a lot of things by what makes sense upstairs. And we can't count on what's upstairs probably a vacant house <laughs> the lack of action is to justify what he already knows he knows that that ain't who it's supposed to be and so he doesn't take any further action he just goes along with the program that's exactly what Barrett was trying to do hey look I know I'm supposed to go out there to battle but I, I, I gotta get up a whole army the guy's got 900 chariots of iron 
It's just, it's comfortable right here. Don't get comfortable in Christianity. Find something to stir you on. Everybody should have a project you're working on. There should be some spiritual project God has brought to your mind. When you're reading, a verse should pop out of your Bible that says, I'm a contradiction. It should say that. And you should say, wait a minute. How in the world does that fit? And now you've got a project. You should see, uh, Pamela was saying that colors popped out at her. So now she's going to research colors in the Bible. That's good. And That's the and way. Skin. Yeah, and animal skin. That's the way the Bible talks to you. Is certain little things out of nowhere jump up and say, hey, look at me. <laughs> and then you got to go investigate. Apathy is lazy. I'll just read it to you. Yeah, okay, I've seen that. That's interesting, but let's keep reading. <laughs> That's apathy. Okay, investigate. Let God give you a project. You should have a project. Um, his ability. We, are, we already see from the story he has no ability. Look at verse 5. Judges 4, verse 5. Judges 4, verse 5. And she, that's Deborah, dwelt under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. So this is what's normally happening. The children of Israel, when there's a conflict or an issue they need to get a definitive answer for, they come to her for judgment. They're not sitting there waiting for some miracle to show them in the sky what the answer is. They get up and go to her for judgment. Verse 6. And she sent and called Barak. He's too lazy to even get up and go. He should have gone to her for judgment, but he didn't. She called him. Said, hey, buddy, get up here. We got something to talk about. That's his ability is zero. He didn't he didn't have enough ability to stand up and walk. <laughs> and he's gonna be the leader of an army. Verse 8. And Barak said unto her, If thou will go with me, then I'll go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. Yeah. He says, Look, I, I, yeah, God's been talking to me, and you, you're making it sound like a good sales pitch, but hey, look, put your money where your mouth is. If you'll go with me, then I'll go. I'm not really buying into it, but if you'll go, then I'll play along. Sounds like he wasn't trusting in God. No, uh, he wasn't trusting in anything. So he had no ability. Okay, so he's definitely not our hero. <laughs> I can see his yeah. mind. If I go with her and we lose, it's her fault. Right. If we win, I went with her, so it's probably my win. Well, she told him, it, you ain't going to get no we honor from it. You get no honor from it, yeah. So the ability is zero. He's a loser there. Apathy gives him a double zero. Okay, so he's not the hero. Nope. He's a zero. Uh, let's look at the next character in our story. Deborah. Deborah the director. Deborah the director. Look at... Judges 4, verse 8. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee. Now let's think about this for a minute. If she goes with him, there's some things she's not doing. Remember what her job is? Mm -hmm. she's, a She's a prophet, a wife, and a judge. If she's going to hold this boy's hand, she's not prophesying, she's not doing wifely duties, and she's not judging. So, I'm not going to say it's a right or a wrong decision, but I am saying she's put on hold her daily duties. For Barak. Uh, look at verse 4, Judges 4 4. And Deborah, a prophetess. Okay, that's category 1. The wife, category 2, of Lapida. 
she judged category three Israel at that time Okay, so she's got a job to do. In verse 5, it said that the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. What happens if she's out here helping train a team of men to fight and going out to battle? What happens when the children of Israel come up for judgment? There ain't nobody there. They're back on their own. Now, she does have some good qualities, great qualities. She has a lot of faith. Look at verse 14. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Now, that took some, that took some real humility right there. Remember, he's been telling her, Hey, I'm not going if you ain't going. She says, Surely I'm going. Get your gear together. We're going. <laughs> and now she says, Hey, today's the day. The Lord's going to deliver Sisera into your hand. Not my hand, not our hand, your hand. She's done all the work. And she's saying here, God's going to give deliverance in your hand. That's pretty tough. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went out from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord discomfited Sisera. And all his chariots and all the uh, all his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. It worked. It really did. That took some faith. She's going with the baby, the big baby. Um, and then she's going to say, God's going to use the big baby. I'm going to step aside and he's going to deliver it into the hands mm -hmm. of a wimp. So she didn't actually go to the battle. She went. Something. She went. So where does it say she actually went to the battle? It says it twice. Okay. Um, verse 9. Oh, I see it. She went with Barak. I will surely go. Mm -hmm. And then it says it, um, she went with verse 14. Barak. And Deborah said unto Barak up, for this is the day which the Lord will deliver sister into thy hand. Um, yep. So she's not trying to steal the limelight or take credit, even though she could and probably should. Uh, I mean, she's the one doing all the work, the heavy lifting, and she's just dragging him along and saying, okay, now it's your turn. Go out there and shine. <laughs> Surely she didn't trust Barrick's ability to lead an army. He's not proved he's had any ability. So she's got another good quality. She's got foresight. She's got a spiritual insight. She can see beyond physical facts. Judges 4, uh, 4 verse 16. And Barak pursued after the chariots, after the host, unto Herosheth, I guess I'm saying that right, of the Gentiles. And all the host of Sisera fell upon the edge of the swords, and there was not a man of them left. Now that's something special. Remember... They've been in bondage. Does it tell, tell us how long? Um, 20 years? Yes, verse 3, 20 years. So for 20 years, they've not been able to do this. For 20 years, Sisera has always had the upper hand. So now for Big Baby to come in and suddenly scare off Sisera, there's more to that story than just that. But she had enough spiritual insight to say, God's going to do something here. The terrorist is no longer going to be a terrorist. He's terrorized Israel for 20 years. She said, this is supernatural. Something out of the blue is going to change. Look at chapter 5, verse 20. Chapter 5, verse 20. Here's what's going on. Here's how the battle actually happened in order to get victory because it wasn't physical physically for 20 years they'd proved they couldn't handle this army here's the real army verse 20 they fought from heaven the stars in their courses fought against Sisera it was spiritual and she obviously had enough spiritual insight to get on board and make this program work look at Psalms 83 9 
Psalms 83, 9. Sometimes you need to pray this prayer. When your enemies and life's problems get to you, you need to see it as a spiritual, not a physical problem. And you need supernatural help, just like they had with Sisera. Psalms 83, 9. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera. Okay, what'd they do with Sisera? It was a spiritual battle going on. As to Jabin at the brook Kishon. Kaizan, Kishon, whatever. Y'all say it any way you want. <laughs> okay, so Deborah is not our hero either. So we've looked at uh, Barak the baby, and we said he's a zero. Deborah, the director, she's not even doing the chores that she was given. She had some great qualities, but she took time out to go teach someone else, which meant she was not doing what she had the job to do. So Deborah, the director, is not the hero either. Now let's look at the last one, and we know this is not the hero, but let's look at it just for fun anyway. Sisera the sissy. <laughs> Sisera the sissy, Judges 4.18. What happens in the story, you've seen already that he gets down and he runs, you know, like a little toddler. And he's, he's, con he's trying to get away. As he's trying to get away, Big Baby is following him. <laughs> Big Baby is happy because now everything's working out. And he didn't have a clue it would work like that. So he's feeling good. He's smiling big and running after him. All of his boys are cleaning up. They're just mopping them up left and right. And so he's going to go after the big dog. Here's what happens. Verse 18. And J.L. She's a uh, Gentile that just happens to be out there camping. And J.L. went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in, my lord. Turn in to me. Fear not. When somebody tells you not to fear, you better be afraid. That's like somebody saying, Now I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, what have you been doing before that? Right. I mean, to tell you the truth? No, don't. Don't even say you're going to. <laughs> Fear not. It should have been a bell. And when he turned in unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And she said, Get and he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink. For I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk. Okay, well, <laughs> She's already told him, don't fear. And now when she can't follow simple directions, you better get scared real quick. But he wasn't scared. And gave him drink and covered him. And again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee and say, Is there any man here? Thou shalt say no. Well, that's true. It's just a sissy, not a man. Well, she had already somebody's wife, so. Well, no, they, they know that everybody's after him. Mm -hmm. And he says, look, if somebody comes to the door looking for a man, there ain't one here. That's I true. left that title that's when I jumped statement. down out of the chariot. Yeah, that's a true statement. <laughs> okay, so, uh, verse 21. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail in his temples and fastened it to the ground. She hit pretty hard. Mm -hmm. For he was fast asleep and weary. So he died. <laughs> you gotta love him. Yeah, well, Cicero is definitely not our hero. He's mm -hmm. the big zero. Um, so where in the world do we find the hero in this story? It's her. The mighty oppressor Sisera became the sissy, uh, so he lost even, if we were going to say that we could have a villain hero, he lost his villain title too. Um, Judges 4, verse 3. Now, Jael is, um, I'm going to ignore her in this story because we've got to cut it off somewhere, but Jael is a good one, however, she's... Um, She's not really the hero of the story. She's kind of the hero by default because he Correct. just ended up being. There. Right. Just now she was obedient. That's true. But she's not a, a real hero 
she had no dog in the fight. She's a Gentile. Judges 4, verse 3. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. There's the heroes. Amen. The heroes are hard to see. It's the multitude of Israel that's praying. Those are the real heroes. Remember, for 20 years, they've been in bondage. There was no deliverer hero. Something changed that. It was prayer. Prayer made the difference. True power is not in Deborah the director, or Barak the baby, or Sister the sissy, but the almighty answering prayer. That's some power. Amen. The real hero of our story is the unnamed and barely seen multitude crying to God for mercy. Uh, you could be on one of the greatest prayer lists ever if you qualify. It's good to be on a good prayer list. It's bad to be on a bad one. Not everybody's praying to the same God. That's right. Don't just dump your problems out for everybody to know about know that someone's going to actually pray and that they're praying to the right God. You could be on a good prayer list. Now I'm going to give you a quick second sermon and I'm not going to build it and y'all can y'all can build it yourself, but I'm going to give you the points because it fits here. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Now you could be on the greatest prayer list of all the universe if you qualify but you don't just automatically get on this list That's right. you have to qualify for it John 17 9 this is Jesus of course and he says I pray for them I pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine Jesus Christ is praying for his disciples that's a pretty good thing right there if you're on his prayer list, you ain't got no problems. Let's see how you get on the list. Verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. So you have to receive God's words. Plural. Words. Not words singular. It's a written thing. It's a book. Have you received his words? Does your book contain all of them? Not all versions do. Okay? So he says to get on this list, there's at least one prerequisite that you need to know to begin with. And that is the words of God. Jesus said, I handed out God's words. So you've got to receive them. Uh, verse 8, you got to get knowledge from God's word. It's not enough just to have a Bible you got to do something with it. You've got to get knowledge from it. It's not enough just to blindly read a chapter. Say, I read a chapter. You need to do something with it. Verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known, there's the knowledge, surely that I came out from thee. Okay? So you need to receive it. You need to get knowledge from it. You need to believe it. Verse 8. They have believed that thou didst send me. So, you get his word. You get knowledge. You're going to learn something in it. Sometimes what you learn goes directly against what you think. <laughs> and now you've got to kick in belief. Believe in it. You've got to believe in it sometimes in spite of what seems to be legitimate facts. Hold your place there. We'll come right back. Look at chapter 5, verse 7. Chapter 5, verse 7. Um, John. John. Mm -hmm. uh, what did I tell you? Turn it around. Go to 7, 5. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Chapter 7, verse 5. For neither did his brethren 
believe in him. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus Christ and his family doesn't believe in him. Well, if somebody should have believed him, it'd be the people that see him every day. Mm -hmm. And he's proved himself every day to. They should have believed. Well, that's we're no excuse either. We'll read the Bible. We've got all of God's words right here. And sometimes we don't believe them either. Okay. Well, you've got to get on the prayer list. you got to believe it. Period. When he says um, something that makes you mad, and he will. He says, all men will be offended in me. If you've not been offended in the Bible, you've not read the Bible. Because Jesus promises it will offend you. He's promised that. If there's no offense, you don't need it. You're just as good as the Bible. But it's going to offend you because it wants to fix you. Verse, uh, ch chapter 17, verse 9. The last qualification to get on the best prayer list is to stay out of the world. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. So it's simple. The hero of our story in Judges ended up being a mass multitude of people who were praying. Not out there making a show of things. Not out there um, trying to come up with new inventions and new things. They were just asking God to do something. Guess what? Jesus always gets his prayers answered. Always. Is he praying for you? If not, get on the list. Mm -hmm. Get on it. That's the hero of our story, and that can be the hero of your story, your problems, your issues. Jesus Christ can be the one praying for you. But make sure you got the qualifications, else you won't be on his list. Now, people want to say that once you're saved, you get everything. No, salvation was the free part. The rest of it cost. It cost. There's a price to it. But the price is well worth it. Barak had to get up and walk. He had to go see Deborah. It cost him something. Energy. <laughs> <laughs> he had to get up and go. Then, it wasn't enough. He had to agree to the terms. That was another thing that cost him. He's like, look, now I'm stepping out there. I could get killed. Remember, this is not a sissy he's going up to fight at the time. This guy was bad news. 20 years terrorizing. And he had 900 chariots of iron. That was something. So he had to agree with it. He did that. Then, um, it still ends up not being him that gives the victory. God does it from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera that day. So the prayer that's going to win your battles is going to come from the heavens. That's right. That's Jesus Christ praying for you. We have an advocate, a prayer warrior, with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. All right, that's it for today. Let's pray and we'll get some vittles. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that we would um, take note of our life and that we would uh, clean things up so that we can be on your prayer list and that uh, we know that you get it. Um, things done and that you uh, can handle all the things that we see as problems and uh, I pray that you would uh, take the word that we, you've given us today and that we would uh, use it uh, not just be a hearer but a doer and um, thank you for the word or the food that we're about to eat in your name we pray amen